All right, spring is the most popular time of the year if you're selling a home. If you're a homeowner ready to sell your home, there, there are common mistakes that can cost money, time, and cause some headaches. Michael Vell is a real estate broker. He's author of Seller Mistakes, What You Were Never Told About Selling Your Home and Why It Should Matter to You. He joins us now, especially in this market that we're in and with the economy the way it is. Michael, our money matters to us and that's why we like to have these conversations. How are you this morning? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you, Michaela? Good, you know, I've had a lot of friends talking about mortgage rates and, and thinking like maybe it's a time to move, it's a time to sell, it's a time to buy, I don't know. What, what would you say to people about the time we're in? The time we're in now is unprecedented, of course. Uh, nobody, people have not wanted a home more than now. And it's hard to tell where this is going to be going, but hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, it is kind of hard to read the tea leaves. And it's nice to hear that it's not just us, but that you as an expert know as well. So the book's called Seller Mistakes. I have a copy of it right here. There tend to be similar mistakes that people make. What are the top ones that, that home sellers tend to make? The main mistake that people make is that most, most home sellers interview only one agent. And as a matter of fact, according to the National Association of Realtors, 75% of all home sellers interview just one agent, which usually means they just pick somebody or they pick a friend. But what's interesting is that 75% of them never use that same agent again. And you have to wonder why. So you actually suggest interviewing them a few people. Actually, only nationwide, only 10% of all home sellers interview more than one agent. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And if um, you interview, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. If you interview more than one, you'll find they're they're very different, and you need to find the one with the right fit that's going to market it the right way. It's an important relationship. This is a big financial transaction. It's an emotional transaction for a lot of people. It sure is. All right. So let's talk about the for sale sign. We see them all over the Southland. Um, you actually think they're ineffective? Actually, it's not what I think. It's actually what the National Association of Realtors thinks. They actually do a huge survey every year. They, they, they ask 35, 40,000 people about how they found a, a home for sale. Mm -hmm. Less than 1% of them found the home through a real estate sign. Now, what's interesting is realtors love real estate signs. Mm. It's advertising for us. So you have to ask yourself, is it really going to be helping me or not? Now, in the book, I actually detail some of the negatives about a real estate sign. For example, it actually, in a way, it sort of feels like it's inviting people into your backyard mm. or to walk up to your window and look inside. The real estate sign really isn't very effective. There's much more effective things that you can do to sell your home. Most of my clients elect not to have a real estate sign when I explain to them the, the, the statistics and the drawbacks to it. What do you prefer? What method do you prefer? Uh, actually, the, de the book details quite a bit of things that you should do. Um, pricing your property is incredibly important. Uh, digital photography, floor plans, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the, the right kind of marketing in front of the right kind of people. So to that end, are, are open houses, uh, I have a friend who's a realtor and I used to go with her sometimes to some of her open houses and so I, I've, I've frequented a few in my time. Are they still as effective as they used to be? Well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, we had the, the biggest increase in sales ever in history uh, during the pandemic, but during the pandemic, open houses were actually banned. Uh -huh, However, of course they the were. real estate market boomed better than it ever has before. Now, what's interesting about open houses is that they have a, an effectiveness rate of probably close to 2%. Oh, now, God. what happens at open houses? You wanna hear something really crazy. Huh. According to the National Association of Realtors, 49% of the agents that, that host an open house are armed. They're armed with pepper spray, a gun, a knife or a taser in that order. Open houses are dangerous. They're not that effective. However, realtors love them. And I'll tell you why. I get to use your front room to market myself. Oh, I didn't think about that. So I suppose the pandemic taught us that virtual open houses, speaking to your digital photography importance, that's kind of the way to go. Well, actually, the the, the way homes are sold now over the last 10 or 15 years since the internet came around, is really your first showing is on the internet. Your second showing is when they come up to the house to see the house. You don't necessarily have to have that showing be an open house. If somebody's motivated and they want to buy your house, they'll make an appointment to see the house. 
That's true. The, if they're motivated to buy it, they're going to they're gonna find a way to call you and, and get there. Again, the book is called Seller's Mistakes, What You Were Never Told About Selling Your Home and Why It Should Matter to You. Find it where books are sold. Michael Bell, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, you take care.